Oh, am I doing this? Yeah, okay. you're doing it. Well, this is Binary Jazz, <laughs> the podcast. You know, the best part about the intros is that it comes after music, so it's not like it. It's not like the cold open. Although I guess today, after I said that, Chris is going to be like... <laughs> That's how we're starting this. Episode. It's going to be a sh- short edit. <laughs> I mean, it might, it might be. Who knows? It's fine. Whatever. You don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah. You don't listen, so it's not a big deal. I know it could be anything. I, I have listened to several shows recently. Oh. Recently. Recently. Yeah. Are you going back to like through like the greatest hits or something? Can you hear a child screaming? Did that yeah, come through I the did. microphone? Yeah. Okay, that's pretty fantastic. Cat, but... I assume you did because I'm on my noise canceling headphones and I heard it and turned my head. So it's whatever. Um, this is a podcast. There's a topic. We talk about it. When we run out of time, we answer listener questions. Follow uh, us if we on the internet. Binaryjazz.us. Links to all our socials. Uh, Twitter. That's our socials. Oh, and of course, YouTube and where you can listen to the podcast. But if you're already listening, I don't think you need to know where to listen to it. Yeah, so, wherever uh, you're listening to it now is the correct place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're glad you're with us. Uh, leave us a review on iTunes because that's what other podcasts tell you to do. So it must be important. I mean, leave us a review anywhere, really. You could just send us a nice comment. We would take that. Or, <laughs> yeah, or send us an email. I, I actually think instead of taking the time to send an email, we'll leave us a review. I think you should uh, get out in nature and soak it in. And that would be better than a review. Take care of yourself. Can they then just send us a review of their time in nature? <laughs> if they still feel so inclined, or maybe they'll have transcended to a higher plane and understand that all of this is, you know, just a thing, dark and meaningless. Have you ever... Wow. It was a little, didn't mean to turn that way. <laughs> Apologize. Have you ever looked up someone's contact info, like an author or someone mm-hmm. along that ilk and like written them a thank you letter? Oh, a thank you letter. That took a turn. Or just like a, hey, thanks for this letter. <laughs> I've done it on Twitter. I've tweeted at, at creators on Twitter and said thanks. Uh, I think email, the two instances I can remember, um, would be questions. Do they get answered? Uh, yes and no, in that order. <laughs> the only the only email to a quasi celebrity that I've ever written. Uh, oh, is it celebrity or just? I mean, well, I mean, I guess you know, just, but I mean, I guess I celebrity. in my in my framing of it, it's someone that you don't have access to. That's why you're writing, or it's that yeah. a bit yeah. detached. You don't. Yeah, uh, the only, Twitter is definitely, like, I've done Twitter and definitely gotten responses. The only email letter that I wrote to anyone that was of quasi-celebrity status was um, I once wrote a letter to Matt Mullenweg a long, long time ago, long, long, Mm -hmm. long time ago, um, when he was still cool and before Automatic was whatever thing that it is now. Profile, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yep, I'm on record. Automatic or fascists? Yeah, uh, and I, I did get I'll a not response. be applying. It, it, <laughs> it was it was um, <laughs> he he had made a comment in an interview that said he reads all of his email, um, and so I wrote him an email, um, and he did respond. I, yeah, I actually think that he, uh, probably is still cool, um, but is in no. over his head. Yeah, I do. I think so. I think that he's. I think that he is uh, in that position where he has risen higher than he expected, and is is just trying to do that song and dance, and really, you know, trying to figure out what's best. And sometimes what's best, you know, he's playing the capitalist game. And that's. I, I really think that's what it comes down to. I don't think that he is inherently an evil person. No, I, I don't. I don't disagree with like the capitalism part of it. I. I. Oh, I the stories that entirely. I. The okay. stories that I've heard about him like dropping into slack and and like uh push 
pulling rank and pushing his weight around and like making people do things because he says so. Uh, right. And his, I mean, I showed you guys a long time ago the the uh, job description for his personal assistant, which kind of basically was like mm-hmm. a combination of personal slave and mommy. And like, I just, I don't know. Like, I think the level, I think, I think the cool has jumped the shark. Okay. I do think that he presents as a cool person, and I do generally think he has good intentions. Um, I think that he has risen to a point of privilege where he's no longer able to see the ground. Right? Ah. Yeah, I think that's, that's roughly what I was trying to say, but maybe with a bit more optimism. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Um, have you I, uh, ever written a snail mail letter to someone? <laughs> this girl has. <laughs> That's rad. Granted, it was like 20 years ago, but still. I used to, I had a, a pen pal slash music sharing uh, rela- snail mail relationship with a friend of a friend. Um like somebody I've met maybe twice in person. Yeah. Um, and he was living, I think at the time, and then he came back, uh, he was living and teaching English in Japan. Mm-hmm. So he um, would send these uh, like MP3 CDs that have like all sorts of like J rock and um, J pop on it. And I would send whatever it was that I was listening to. And we were like into the same sort of like post, post rock stuff at the same at the time when we had met so like you know um and yeah so there is a there's maybe a summer ish or so where like we were passing cds of mp3s back and forth um and that's probably the last dedicated snail mail correspondence that i've had with anyone mm. I had uh, a friend in elementary school. Mm, pretty sure her name was Erica. She moved to, pretty sure it was Virginia. And we did snail mail for a few years and then, you know, kind of died out. But on some family vacation, we were through, like going through Virginia. And so I think. I don't remember if my parents were friends with her parents or what, but I think we stayed at her house one night, like on the way through instead of like, you know, hotel or tenting or whatever. Um, Maybe we said dinner there, but it was weird because we hadn't talked in a while. So there was like no more, and we had nothing to talk about because we, we we were a million States away and, you know, there was no more overlap. (laughs) No, I was like, Oh, okay. All right. This is how friends grow apart. All right. Good lesson. Good lesson. I it think, happens. I think, if I'm remembering correctly, one of the things that we did when we were passing CDs back and forth is, we had, like, we kept we kept reusing the same padded envelope. So it just basically get more and more destroyed, and like stamps would be, like there'd be like the stamps, and then they get crossed out and put more stamps or whatever on top of it, and like just like it was yeah. I don't. I think I think he ended up with with it in the end, so I don't have that. Otherwise, I probably would have kept it. When when Rhonda and I were first married, she did a um, a scrapbook, like with her sorority sisters. She just graduated college, and she did it in a paint bucket. So she had an empty paint bucket, and like set up this, like all these pages, like empty, and put a label on it, and sent the paint bucket. And then when you got it, you opened it up and you added a page. You like the page you're supposed to work on, and then you seal it back up, taped it, put it in the mail, and then it finally came back to Rhonda and. The bucket was like all dinged up and dented on the side. But it, was, <laughs> it was cool. She opened it, pulled out, pulled it out, and buckets are really in important in your life. <laughs> it's a recurring theme on binary jazz: is the buckets of it's Gary. Buckets. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really smart way to send something along, though. Good old Gary buckets. Gary buckets. Uh, Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> I can sell buckets. <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I could have like a review of every bucket I sell, you know. Just get in the bucket business. 
which is a perfect a, lead in to this week's a very topic. Important, uh, oh, thank goodness for that. Important <laughs> business to be in. It's buckets. Gary Bucket. Uh, I think we had a few false starts there. <laughs> Getting off the runway. Chris, you just you're just gonna edit all that out, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> you don't know, but most of our podcasts end up being about twenty five seconds. <laughs> Welcome to Binary, and that's our show. <laughs> and that's our show. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Um, this no, week's that's a topic. lie. We, we never say thanks. Oh, that's our show. Yeah. <laughs> that's our show. Bye. And do this uh, with our hands. Yeah, jazz Maybe. hands. Jazz hands. I do. After it's done every time I do that, actually. Zoom kills us, and then I say, and that's our show. Boy, okay. it's going to be awkward at the end of this episode when I start doing that two minutes out. Sorry, today's topic. Al- Allison is. was giving us a topic. Oh yeah, today's topic is palimpsest. Palimpsest. Depending on who you talk uh, to. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's two pronunciations. P a l i m p s e s t. Palimpsest. P a l i m p s e s t. So there's an imp in the middle. Yes. And the cest at the end. Yes. Yes. Palimpsest. Palimpsest. It kind of just depends on where you put the emphasis, I guess. Uh, I have stunned them. <laughs> Let the audience know. <laughs> well, the interesting thing about silent. this is it's not one that I can immediately say, well, the Latin root, blah, blah, blah. Have you ever heard of the, heard this word before? Never in so. my life. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, I don't mean that in a bad way, but like, I was like, I think they're gonna, this is one of those ones where I was like, they're just gonna know this. I have no idea why. I think very highly of you. Apparently. Apparently far higher than we think of ourselves. We shouldn't have held an episode today then. Dashed your, <laughs> dashed your expectations. <laughs> I think, no, I, I thought this was gonna be one of those ones that you like, sneaky, kind of had a niche of knowledge that I didn't know about. Because I don't know you. 24 7. No, but pretty close to this point. Okay, so so that <laughs> when, in when itself, you're the end of my bubble of now. That in itself, Gary, is is a clue. What does Allison think we know enough about that yeah. we might know this thing? So I would propose it either is something huh. music related or okay. something like like English language or literary related, but I think that oh. that's probably thinking far too highly of us. <laughs> you guys, okay, first of all, you both know a tremendous amount about a lot of things that I have to veer completely away from. Cause I'm like, well, soccer's out, music is out, space is out. <laughs> I think well, we wouldn't surprised fall in into those things generally anyway. And that's true, but they're- the possible they're, exception of soccer. They're vast topics yes. that, <laughs> um is is it it's a street performer it's a kind of street performer i think palimpsest i don't know why i think that i that we would you would think that we would about street performer i feel like this is that but i feel like it's a uh, falls into a forgive me bucket of knowledge about things like um like I, from your your busk your hobby of busking at like sure. fairs and such Right, right. Have any? Have either of you spent much time busking or no? I have never busked. I have. Really? On what? Uh, like instrumentally or? Oh no, with my hula hoop. Okay. You were busking with your hula hoop. Yeah. What did you use as a thing to collect tips? Well, they have to stay away from me, which is also like. Right. A good oh, that's, thing, that's generally. <laughs> well, and usually, like, usually, like, you know, a guitarist will use his guitar case or a violinist will use their violin right. case. You don't no, have, just, like, a hula hoop case. Like, what do you use for that? I'm, I'm actually, I do have a hula hoop case. Okay. Oh. But I didn't use that. I didn't use it. I just had, like, a, a hat kind of thing. Yeah. It's more like, yeah. Because my hula hoop case is full of my other hula hoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many hula hoops is it, do you own? Is it just like a big, um, like padded, well, circle is dumb, circle that like you would slide it in with handles is the idea that it's easier to move a bunch of hula hoops with that? Yeah, it to... yeah. It has like elastic. Because um, like when I ever traveled with my hoops, I would just like bungee them together and 
mm. call it yeah. because people aren't going to be gentle with them regardless <laughs> which is fine <laughs> they're pretty sturdy it's not a concern um yeah yeah how many hoops do you have um personal ones i probably have four and then ones that i still have from that are like kind of ready just to be sold or whatever um probably like 10 mm. and then i have one no wait four yeah it's like i have my my glow hoop i have like my regular hoop and my small hoop and then like maybe two little ones do you like when you hoop were you doing like multiple hoops at the same time sort of thing or you just not sort of, like, depends on the situation I used to, but generally I'm just doing it for fun now and I enjoy it if it's just one. I feel like multiple hoops is more impressive to people, obviously, mm -hmm. um, but I can get away with more just with one by myself. And I can do more tricks with just one. It's right. I don't yeah. know. There's only so many things you can do with more than one. Yeah. I'm aware. Uh, Which actually means that you're probably more impressive to like, you know, the people that are more into technical hooping. Well, the thing, the thing that appreciate that one, the technique is the thing that, that uh, you see like all the YouTube videos of with hooping is usually like doing stuff that isn't actually hooping, but like doing weird things, the hoop over here and then bringing it over here, but it's not actually on your body. You're just like doing crazy shit with it and, yeah. and it's called hooping, um, but it's really not. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, I mean, I think the people that actually know anything that's far less impressive but it's visually oh it's visually amazing because yeah. <laughs> it's also like i don't know if my skills are such where i could do that type of thing i'm just more i guess i'm just more basic <laughs> yeah. but i obviously haven't busked in quite some time <laughs> um yeah i was asking because we have I think two hoops currently, but that's after we got rid of two other hoops that were the kind that sort of like broke into pieces. Yeah. Um, when we, Erin used those for a while, but then decided that she didn't, because they were like, they're a little bit heavier and they have um, um, like the, the edges, like the ends of the little pieces. And she wanted like one that was just like complete. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, we might actually have, three because two of them are hers and one of them was mine but I don't they're them. really fun to make if you have enough people that want one and you can like just invest in the tubing and like do it up mm -hmm. but you do wind up with like a lot of hula hoops for one family <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think we looked into that at one point um briefly like figuring out how to how to make them I think the other thing about hooping with multiple hoops is that they all have to be the same size and like that seems somehow boring and redundant to me <laughs> to have three hoops that are the same size yeah, also like i'm in a small apartment right i can't we have like <laughs> oh, my word. i had this mental image of like like around once and then thunk on the wall and then down to the ground like ah. it's 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 legit like yeah. i can't i can't yeah. tell you the number of times when like uh stuff got hit uh stuff has gotten hit like when the kids were little uh and they were crawling around like whack in the head like i mean it's sure it's it's uh it's it's dangerous yeah no i'm not allowed to hoop in the house anymore <laughs> it's uh there's just no space it's just yeah it's just not and then storage wise it's like we already have like three bikes and like the hoops have to stay in a closet except for yeah it's just you know yeah you gotta think vertical <laughs> Which brings us to Palimpsest. <laughs> yes, Palimpsest. Uh, which, okay, so you, you, Gary said it was a kind of street performer. What kind of street performer? I'm just delaying right now. What, what kind of street uh, performer is a Palimpsest? Something to do with, with buckets. <laughs> what did you say, Allison? Something, something to, do to do with buckets. So, so, so you would know, but I mean, you're, you're cheating, but um, so in, in, I would say that if it did have to do with buckets, which it doesn't, but if it did have to do with buckets, it's it's those street drummers that use buckets and, and found objects oh, dang, as, as percussion. Yeah, there we go. 
in but that's not days. it. It's no. definitely not it. Yeah, is it a way for moving buckets? I wonder, like a bucket moving tool. A bucket moving tool. Like, well, they can be like, heavy. Like if it's a prongs. Bar. For for some reason, for some reason, when you said street performer, and in the in the in the relation to palimpsest, I had like mimes in my That's head. What I thought. Yeah, like it's a fancy okay. word for like some sort of like silent like performer of some kind that like just wanders around and like is kind of weird uh but maybe yeah, not like, maybe like, like a mime but like somebody who's just like i don't know like a like like a ren fair jester type person that's like doing visual gags but like not speaking i went to that place too i was like oh yeah like i immediately pictured like a jester harlequin mime yeah <laughs> like, yeah like picking things out of your hair or like yeah <laughs> I really enjoyed that mental image. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, with the foolish, foolish chuckling. <laughs> I don't know. Palimpsest, what, palimpsest as, as sounds to me like it's some sort of a medical thing. Like it's like something really gross and like uh, yeah, something. Yeah, kind of cyst. Right. But yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's something gross and something that's not there, not supposed to be there, like a cyst. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's probably it's probably well, the zest part of the word that makes me think that. Yeah. Yeah. And you're palimp. Palimp set sound. Palimp also sounds like like something bad, like a pustule. When have I ever brought something that's full of goo? Flow bundles, maybe. I mean, Dyson spheres, what? arguably. Okay, flow bundle, but that's interesting. Like you think it about it every time you you eat a banana, you're like, you darn right, I do. <laughs> that's a flow bundle. And petrichor is a good one that's become a part of my vocabulary. It's not full of goo, though. Harkening back. What's that? It's not full it's of not goo, full though. Of goo. It's, oh, Thank no. Goodness. No, but it's muddy. Mud and I, goo are not the same thing, Gary. You heard it here first. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Binary jazz um, coming up with scientific discoveries. <laughs> Since Mud 20, and you are not the same thing. Since 2016? 16? 16? 18? 17? 18? It was, what it was year it? is it now? It's 20. <laughs> 2020. 2020. But we it started 2017. Yeah. So we did all well, we the started. It, we, started after, we started after the new year. I remember. Yeah. Um, I think it was 20. But we started talking about it. We started talking about it at the end of 2017. So since 2017. Oh. Okay. Because I, I, our first episode episode alpha or pre-alpha yeah. release i was not in florida i was in georgia at a hotel the first episode i wasn't we even here about, for the first yeah, the first episode we were talking yeah. about there like, i didn't show up for for far too long uh we were not yeah we were not held in check by by allison we had no idea what we were doing that was an interesting yeah. vibe though just to like for me to drop it in the chat and then you're kind of left to your own devices <laughs> yeah we might have to lose that episode chris <laughs> Must be some corruption on the cloud. And... <laughs> it, it's there for oh, posterity. Sorry. It's there for posterity. The evolution. Do you, uh, does uh, do S three buckets need to be backed up? Isn't I mean sure, but S three is in itself sort of its own like. Backup but like, storage. but it's not though. It's like the idea of saying RAID is back up, like. Like, oh, I have RAID 0, so I have two copies, right? But, but if you delete the file, like, it's still gone. You still need the backup. Yeah. So S3, I need, the, I need a backup. Okay. Well, For our non-technical listeners, none of this matters. <laughs> <laughs> and it has absolutely nothing to do with the topic. And don't worry yeah. if you don't understand anything that was just said. <laughs> Uh, and for our technical listeners, if there are any, um, Gary just uh, switched over all of our media to some sort of cloud storage <laughs> thing yeah i feel like this is an important and now he's stressing about so, it yeah i looked at uh disk usage on uh the vps we're on and said oh gee we're running out of space maybe i should move some media over to an s3 bucket and so i did and then i looked at it and said gee we're still using a lot of space and then i discovered the debug log was 
22 gigabytes. And uh, I probably didn't need to set up S3. I could have left everything where it was, but. Until, barn, until our media becomes 22 gigabytes larger. I mean, it'll get there eventually. Yeah, I think it was, I think the total was 39. So, you know, 39 minus 22 equals what? Like 17, 17 gigs of media. That seems awful high. How, well, many, how many megabytes is one of these podcasts? Um, let me look. This is Meanwhile, a great way to avoid talking about podcasts. Yeah, this is, this is great radio. <laughs> it's right really now. compelling. Uh, really um, compelling. <laughs> Chris, and it's great video too. Chris navigates through his directory <laughs> structure. Just early morning, early Just morning. Normal tech things fun. that normal people do. Yeah. Uh, okay, the Panopticon episode, episode yeah. 101, 1011, oh, uh, is 66.7 megabytes. Okay, so they're not big. Uh, but there's a lot so of maybe them. maybe. I've had to, I've had to clear How many things. can there possibly be? A lot. Have we uh, done okay. quite so a few? The number of episodes we have made yeah. is standing today uh, at 89. Wow. That's one, like one zero more than I expected. 10111100 in binary is 89, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who do not translate binary in your head, which is also us. <laughs> You've talked with us a lot, Gary, whether you want to admit it or not. Actually, 88, 88 oh, because that includes the one that's in draft right now. So that's it. So 88 is, is the number of episodes that we have. What, what Which makes sense, because it would be odd if it would end with a one. I, I know oh, that much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Cool. We and have so, a very good one coming out tomorrow, though. I'm excited about that one. It's my only, which, which would have been last week for anybody listening. Um, but it's it's my very first topic. I'm very excited for that to hit the I, world. I find recently I've been digging into um, some really deep archives on some I'm shows. still I'm still delaying my own answer for what a palimpsest is. I know I've, I I've noticed I've noticed that we're just like bypassing it. I'm just like. <laughs> I think that I think that I think that the the general thought is it's medical related in some way. Sure. Sure. Is it definitely? Okay. Is it the name of tell? the? Maybe you should. Do you want me? Because I could just tell you. It's not like we have to wait. I we're I mean we're we're about ten well like five seconds away from getting the ten minute warning anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the timer, so it could be like I'm just maybe listening. maybe I lied and it's not a ten minute warning. It's it's actually like a two minute warning, and I just I thought think it was it's nine, minute. isn't it? I don't know. It's immaterial. It's yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so about <laughs> obsessed. Um, it can be used a bunch of different ways, but originally it was used in textual studies. So it's like a manuscript page for that the text has been scraped or washed off, so it can be reused for another document. Uh, oh. yeah. Why so, would I know this? <laughs> well, because it's pertinent in tech because some things save over items and some things clear what was there before and then save okay. and so i was like maybe they know it because of some sort of back-end database thing um because so it is it is something it is something that is used uh, it is a word that is used with regards to technology right because it's basically just like where's the there was such a good little snippet Charlotte ran out of the window and is pointing at me, so I keep pointing back at her. It's a pretty good game. <laughs> I guess because of the, and it's relevant to tech because things, it's like that, the idea that things are lost when you switch formats. So like when you transfer something, say from, it's a good example, like maybe on video and you're transferring it to another video. So something's lost from that mm -hmm. original file. So if you're like, creating a new file, it's going to be different than if you copy over the old file and then those bits remain underneath. Not obviously in tech, but like, I'm, cause I'm like picturing yeah. tech as like very, a, like a layered material item. <laughs> but like, but that's why like in some cases you can recover those bits from certain file types, but not other file types. So 
would it would it be would you say that like a a template partial would be equivalent here where like here's the the frame and then the variables are replaced with different content as it comes in but the partial is the full and oh full yeah i i think that could Whatever be considered. the word is that i can't say palimpsest palimpsest yes thank you palimpsest cool uh yeah that was not something and that's our that show I, that uh, <laughs> that was not something that i knew i love when you're so nonplussed about it you're like oh jeez. <laughs> Well, I, I, uh, yesterday, or no, what's today? Today's Thursday. We do this on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Tuesday. Thursday, yeah. The day I had the conversation doesn't matter for the purposes of what I'm about to say. Um, I had a conversation with a colleague and, uh, we got into, uh, very deep in the weeds into object oriented design patterns. And I was like, okay, this is, I need to read some more in the Gang of Four book tonight. I went to grab it from my bookshelf, but oh yeah, my books are packed. And so, I've had this like weird nagging need to uh, find design patterns everywhere since then because I can't fully flesh out the rest of the thought I was trying to have on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. That's, that's the tweet. That's the when show. Is, when is your actual move date? Uh, it's still like a month out. Yeah. Uh, July the 1st, we close here in Florida. Uh -huh. July 2nd, we close in North Carolina. So it's a long way out. Not really, but it's far enough out that, you know, things can change. So we do have, uh, we do have Ooh, listener feedback, oh. uh, but as Ooh, it has, been, as it has been in the in the last several episodes when we've had it, it's completely spam. Oh, uh, I was so excited. I always, I always get my hopes up. <laughs> this is from Blondell Coons. Oh, and I'm I'm going to read it in the voice that I think the advertisement uh, would come in. <laughs> okay. Um, in particular, because I keep seeing particular uh, YouTube ads um, of a, of a particular variety uh, with a particular kind of male advertiser, um, and I feel like this is coming from the same type of person. No more paying your, sorry, no more paying way too much money for ripoff Facebook advertising. Let me show you a method that charges only a minute of a minute, minute, only a minute bit of cash and provides almost indefinite volume of visitors to your website. For oh. details, check out bit.ly dot some stuff. That's wow. several things struck me. There about you go. That. First off, uh, what, what was the word they used back? for how much? How much traffic? Uh, how much traffic? Uh, indefinite. Indefinite. That in seems like a pretty good way to hedge your bets. An like, indefinite volume of visitors. You got no more traffic. That is an indefinite amount. <laughs> it's it's pretty ideal. That's well played, as far as spam goes. And uh, and that bitly URL is pretty is, strong. Is is my minute and minute are spelled the same way, right? It's the context that changes it. Yes, I believe so. Okay, because like I'm that's I'm doubting it because I read that as minute and I was like, wait, but that's not minute; it's minute. Although minute bit of cash is just wrong anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, all that right, one. so Blondell, uh, I'm going to trash that, but your message has been received and heard. <laughs> message, message received. It has been heard by all of our listeners. I mean, I could go through a spam filter, uh, spam inbox uh, for feedback, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> Reply all. Thank you. We will be <laughs> in touch. Same. <Thank> <laughs> uh, yeah. I've been practicing I did not my voices expect obviously. rain today. I don't know if I mean I hope you can hear on the no the roof. No, sad. Oh, it's a that's so weird. I need to do some exploration into the frequency response on the microphone on this computer because screaming child is quieter than the rain on the roof. What's going on? What's happening here? I don't understand why. There, there is a frequency that um like above which i cannot hear and um 
like I knew this because there was there's a show that we were watching with the kids called Brain Games and they were doing like, you know, these this is the frequency that you should be able to hear at this age. Like we can tell how old you are yeah. based on frequencies. And I'm like totally fucked. My ears are shot. Um what? So so there is that. But there's a particular frequency. Um we first discovered it on uh, a trip we went to where were we? We were in Denver and there was a bug that was making this high pitched sound. And everybody was like, what's that sound? I'm like, what sound? Like, no, that sound, it's really, really loud. I I hear birds, I hear the dog in the distance, I hear the wind, I don't know what you're talking about, what sound? And like, I could not hear this this high pitched uh, chirruping or whatever of the insect. And then um, later, uh, Aaron got this like little tiny bell uh for like um solstice stuff um the idea was like and it came with like these like um little silver like snowflake discs or whatever and so the idea is like you put a wish in the snowflake and you ring the bell and it goes out into the world and the universe whatever um for the year um and all i hear of the bell is like the tapping of the the hammer hitting the side of the bell I don't hear the dinging at all. And I'm like, that yeah. doesn't make any sound. And she's like, yeah, it does. I'm like, no, it <laughs> really doesn't. It just makes a rattle. It just makes I a love rattle. The idea noise. of you being like, you got ripped off. <laughs> yeah. Like, the bell's like, broke. Like, what's, what's wrong with the bell? Like, I, you it got a broken a, one. It just got, it makes a rattling noise. And she's like, no, it, it's dinging. And she keeps yeah. doing it. And like, she, she goes to the kitchen. You hear it, right? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, Okay, that's that's in the that's like, in the frequency range above which I cannot hear. Yeah, so there's some the there, Polar Express. It's fine. Yeah, there's, cool. there's the something gone away for you, Chris. It's okay. We we've talked about like trying to figure out what that frequency is, just like out of curiosity. Yes. Like, to get, <laughs> like I have out one where of those, it but it's not a shelf like that. In your case, it sounds like it's a shelf, like above yeah. this frequency, you can't hear it. For me, it's um a little bit above C sharp, but in, in spoken language, like that very rarely happens that people hit a tone that doesn't have that isn't like swooping through so on occasion like i will see someone talking and part of a word will just not be audible to me so that's i don't know that's bizarre yeah yeah so if i was doing like a frequency sweep like there's a point where like i would you know there'd just be like a blank a dead space yeah. and then you could hear yes. the rest yeah yeah but i mean it doesn't really matter in most in most things because there's overtones and you know harmonics and whatnot that that support it just gets but if you were a superhero your arch nemesis would only speak in that that. frequency (laughs) in that frequency thank goodness i'm not a superhero (laughs) problem to solve there dodge that bullet Hmm. dodge that bullet i can hear most things i think (laughs) but i guess i wouldn't know what i can't hear so I mean, I blame very loud concerts, uh, and I also blame uh, blowing out my eardrum uh, when I had an ear infection. That'll do it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the big thing, but that really only, that was like one ear um, that, that got affected by that. Um, and I, I mean, I was not kind to my ears as a young adult going to, I mean, I, I could probably name the concert that did the most damage <laughs> uh, to my hearing. Hmm? Was it Guar? No, it was not Guar. I've never seen Guar. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.